I'm Gabby Lamb. And I'm Harper Rose Drummond. And you're You're listening to Tea Time, Time, where we talk about the nastiest, dirtiest, naughtiest, wildest secrets. Enjoy. Well, welcome back to another episode of Tea Time. I'm your host, Gabby, and this is Harper. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Uh, welcome to Tea Time. This is Blonde, and I am a doctor, a scientist, any any medical thing you can imagine. That's what I am. And if anyone has a fucking problem with that... Okay, here's the thing. Lee is going... I just, you know, I've spent the past few weeks getting my fucking hair from bleach and black to this. And Lee's like, it's not blonde. It's for sure fucking... It's highlighted blonde. It's It's... I would say it's a very like dirty like blonde you wouldn't look at this and be like oh that's a brunette that's brunette well you'd know that i'm brunette but you wouldn't be like that's brunette the camera's making it look a little darker but no in person it's not giving i don't do you not fucking know what blonde hair is lee that's blonde hair this is very light blonde this is yes and now that we all know our colors here's something important that lee needs to know yeah he needs to know that when you walk in after having a full, here's the thing for those I of you that it are looks just great. Well, okay. Looks but I'm not great. saying that it doesn't look great. I'm saying it's fucking blonde. No, no, no. Here's the, cause now you're fucking our asses. And yeah, what did I say about my that? Ass. What did I fucking say about that? Lee? He's fucking my yeah, ass. Get your dick out of Gabby's ass. Get your dick out of my ass. Get your dick Lee. out of my fucking ears. Here's the thing. Gabby and I have gone through a very, uh, two very big transformations. <laughs> you have like gone back into like more like natural girl, yeah, like I'm girl going, next door. And you want to I know? have gone into fucking, I'm giving fucking like pussy alien and vibes and lee didn't have shit to say except for that's not blonde really you couldn't think of any other fucking comment and here i'll tell you why and today's episode is on fucking bullies yeah it is on fucking bullying <laughs> featuring all, our fucking we have bully a lot, we have a lot to unpack. um and here's the God thing what i will it. say half of the reason and i hate to admit this i really do hate to admit this am i looking into this camera now yeah yeah sure. you can so i really do hate to admit this but half of the reason that i got i changed my hair to like a more neutral, you know, color Mm -hmm. is because of watching myself back on this podcast and reading comments from people being like, look at yourself in the mirror, you bitch. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit more natural. I let them win. I let the bullies win. We ended up on the wrong side of YouTube when we first launched. I let them win. And and you were like, I want to read these comments because I want to laugh at them. And I almost was like, no, you don't. You don't. Because this isn't the right, this isn't the right thing to do. Because these these are. I know it's not the right thing. It's never the right thing to do. Here's what I will say, Lee. You you do. You do. I feel like you delete some of the super mean comments. Do you? Um, Or maybe YouTube takes them down because sometimes I see some of the comments and it makes me go. (gasps) It makes me gasp. I delete some of them. YouTube definitely takes some of them down. Um, That's on no free speech. (laughs) I definitely. I went through what all like the. Really fucking like trolly bullshit that we hit right when we launched our new YouTube. You guys, I'm obsessed with the women shouldn't have podcasts. Well, wait, I'm gonna plug something really quick. You guys, please, for the love of goddamn fucking Christ and all his little friends, go subscribe to our YouTube because right now we got on incel. Please, God, go subscribe. We got to our we YouTube. got on the incel and we used to we almost had three thousand subscribers and now we have like almost six hundred. Yeah. Yeah, but so, so we're we coming more. back up. But yeah, please, guys. We need more. Um, anyway, I caved to the bullies that were like, you're ugly. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I, maybe it's time that I do dip my toes into a little bit of more of an, a neutral look. But on some real shit, you were never fucking ugly. You were not ugly. And you had a very distinct, edgy, hardcore look. I like that look. Yeah, I, it was I, really I fucking like that, cool. Yeah, I thought, I think that there's something to... Um, with why and when you asked should I dye my hair blonde, and my reaction was no because I think that there's something to um, developing a a brand and a style and so and a way that people recognize you. Well, I was sick of the bleach and black. Okay. Well, here's the thing: yeah. she still I, has her fucking neck tell. tattoos. Yeah, so. I do have my neck tattoos, my big fake lips, yeah. and all of the other things that I have that make me undeniably recognizable. Okay, don't ever punch the word undeniably. undeniably. Okay, honestly. Recognizable. Well, here's the thing. Um you yes. undeniably look like Andy with the freckles, but here's the thing. I um I recently fucking okay, as we all can fucking see on here, I just dyed my motherfucking eyebrows bleach blonde. But um you and I were having a really interesting conversation. I think it was either today or a few days ago. Or no, it was a few days ago about like about having a jarring look. And I feel like yeah. I like honestly, my mom is my bully. But I also Me I feel too. like I've always liked looking 
um, girl next door. She's a girl next soft door. Girl. It, it's 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 easy. It's palatable. It's um you know it's a crowd pleaser. It's uh, it's okay. Like you're just like you know you're kind of like riding on like the yeah. On, in the safe zone. Men see and you and I've they're like, oh, always, she's hot because she looks normal. And I've always wanted to try an edgier look, but I've always been like afraid. And also as someone who d- definitely does like cuck to like validation seeking uh-huh. and, or like, you know, needing validation, I, I've always been too afraid to. And you honestly really were fucking gassing up this, you know, this change. And I'm happy I did it. Yeah, I love it. I fucking love it too. I love an edgy girl look. Oh my God. And then I was telling you this in the car. Lee, this was probably on your burner account, but someone messaged me. <laughs> he sends me my own picture and he goes, I can't wait till you're hot again. And I was like, oh, that was Shut. Lee. Yeah, that was fucking Lee. So Lee, Lee. get the fuck off the burner account. Start sending the messages because you're really pissing me the fuck off. <laughs> You know what? Oh, you already you look okay. like you got this on your fucking brows. Is for friends. Okay. Oh all right. yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Yeah. So what? So <laughs> oh my god! I just him. I got a message that said, "Are you going to call out Gabby and Harper for being your bully?" On this episode. Oh, oh well, we know that. You Here's the your bully. thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> we 100. Here's take, the thing. Hands down, we are. Hey, hey, calling it out. If you got ears and you got eyes and you got a fucking pussy and a bussy, then you can clearly fucking see. We know what we're bullies. doing. We know what we're the fucking thing. doing. And so fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck and you. Fuck you. And fuck you. Most She's a fucking bully. <laughs> You're a fucking bully, bitch. And you want to know what? You yeah, dish it out and then you can't take it. But here's the thing. <laughs> Who's more of a bully, Lee? Um, I think, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Say it. Who's no, for real. Who do you No, think? no, no. And, and not just because I turned you down. <laughs> <laughs> He's still bitter about that. Yeah, he is. Well, well Harper, um, you didn't let, my, let me put my penis inside of you, so um, it's pretty much giving me big bully vibes. Yeah, really. You didn't let me fucking toss around your big tits. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think I think that Fort Harper, it's more of a knee jerk reaction. I think Gabby, you have to try to be mean to me. I think that I think that I'm, it's, I'm not so. Me- it's, I'm not mean. It's more of a bit. Where oh Harper's my God. actually mean to me. Yeah, like, oh I'm actually... Oh, my God. Yeah, I Harper am fucking actually has de- hate. No, I'm fucking... Yeah. Harper de- has hate in her heart, no, and I'm kind You have fucking cigarette ashes in your heart, and now here's the thing. You have fucking fleas in yours. <laughs> and you want to know what? At the end of the day... I am a delicate flower, and this is just a you're defense. You're a fucking bitch at no, the end of the day. <laughs> you're a fucking bitch. No, you're literally a fucking spiced out cunt. You're and a I literally fucking have... bitch. No way. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Yesterday, no. I had to threaten you to stop doing whatever the fuck you were doing by pulling my threaten. dirty ass underwear. I was sitting on the couch, you fucking bitch. That's what I was doing. I was sitting on the couch with Joy watching a TV <laughs> show, and then you weren't getting the attention you wanted, so then you went into the no, fucking- No, because you said something to bully me, and I pulled out my dirty ass shit stained oh, oh, underwear, I, and I started I threatening said? her with it. Because you were, you, were, you were shaking. Okay, we were watching TV yesterday, and uh, like yesterday night or whatever, Shauna Ray, look her up, you're going to love it, and uh, we were watching fucking Shauna Ray, and- you were rattling pills like a fucking banshee. And you're like, sugar rush, hockey on sugar, sugar. And I'm like, oh my God, like, shut up. I did have like six cookies and I did get a big chucky chucky. Yes, so I, I might chucky, have- Chucky chucky candy I, I might have mentioned, hey, hey Gab, can you maybe quiet it the fuck down? And I down? had my medication and I was I was shaking them around like maracas. Yeah, so I asked her <laughs> calmly and sweetly to stop. You go in your room- to get fucking shit pants. And also, by the way, can we really just talk about how many options of shit pants you had? <laughs> yeah. You had so many tons. <laughs> you, it was a I'd fucking- I'd be shitting in them pants. Gabby in the chocolate factory in her, her fucking room. <laughs> it was <laughs> Shitsville, USA. And so then I had to like fling milk at you to get rid of the fucking shit. Yeah, and then shit. you're fucking dumping a paintbrush in milk that I was dunking my chucky chucky- chip cookies in and you fucking well you were done well you were trying to throw fucking diarrhea <laughs> at like a fucking literal primate at Joy and I so uh oh Lee it's giving self defense yet again is uh, it, are you still on me what the fuck is going okay, on okay so well yeah let's get into bullies <laughs> fuck you guys no okay stop getting loud everyone's over it um fuck you Lee Fuck you. Lee and I have to spend six hours in a car tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Lee, Lee's going to try and, try and convince me. you to give him fucking road head. He's going to yeah, lock Lee's you in the fucking car. Lee's going to try and literally rape me tomorrow. I'm bringing my fucking taser. Do don't, it. Yeah. I, Do well, it. No, don't. I'm watching you, Lee. I'm literally watching don't. you. But here's the thing. So Lee tried to call us out. Didn't work. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> it totally worked. You, tri- you guys are, are still triggered over it. No, you guys are still triggered. That's just a bully. Bully, 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 bully. You're brutal. Bully, 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 okay, bully, bully, uh, bully. No. Okay, here's the thing. Classic bully move. No. <laughs> 
You know what? It's called self defense, and I'm sorry that and I'm that's not what, fucking. But that's where all bullies. Pussy cuck. That's where all bullies come from. It no, comes that's from actually fear not, and self defense. No, it's, yes, it comes you're from so being, afraid. No, it comes on being picked on at home, and then you have to fucking take that shit out. Yeah, and that's, who, what, that's what bullies who do. And that's what bullies do because they're always getting fucking hit at home. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And who hits me at home, Gabby? I don't okay. hit you. I don't fucking wait, hit wait, you. Shit, underwear. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. So here's the thing. Were you guys the bullies or were you bullied or both? Let's share our own stories of being bullied. Definitely throughout. Okay. When I was in school, I was bullied. How? Okay. So is she, okay. You and I have a similar thing. So I had a childhood best friend and, um, we, we started when she actually started off as my bully and yes. she made my yes. life so relatable, a fucking a living hell. She came to my birthday party. I cried in the bathroom at my own birthday party and like spent the night and turned all the girls against me. Ha ha ha. And it was really fun. And then, um, don't worry. This is the same um, best friend whose older brother did rape me. Um, and you know, later in adulthood. Her? Yeah. And okay. I was like, get me away from this family. Um, but anyways, yeah. So she started off as my bully and then huge personality, whatever. Everyone had to be like- Charismatic. Subs- very yeah. charismatic, very hot. Everyone had to be subservient to her. Love it. And then um, I, f- I guess like in middle school, high school, um, we became friends. More so high school. Yeah, high school. And then, uh, but she was always really mean. Even when we were friends, at best friends, she was always incredibly fucking rude. They're always like that. And always putting me down, always putting like- Oh, she came out to visit me. This is a, a few weeks before I got raped. So she came out to visit me. I was living in LA. I was living with my boyfriend at the time. And this guy was very, very sweet. And she's just like talking shit on him. Like, you know, oh, he's not hot. He's not this. Da, da, da. And it's like, okay, you know, just relax. And like, um, she was just being, she just was like such a fucking hater. And then if things didn't go her way, it was like the end of the fucking world. Always is. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and always, um, <clears throat> you know, like comp assaults. Like she could never be like, oh, you look really pretty. She was like, oh my God. What's up with your I love eyebrows. the way that you have like a double chin when you laugh. <laughs> it's cute. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Very, very obnoxious. But then anyways, you know, her brother did give me a little bit of raperoni and cheese. And then I... And then when I told her, she was like, well, he's never done this to any of my other friends. So why you? And I'm like, good because, point. Because uh, her other friends weren't weak like you. Well, um, no, I don't think that's because I don't think that's it. I think it's because I was literally the dressed? hottest one of How are you dressed? I was wearing her dress. So he was into his sister. Okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. How are you dressed? Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a valid question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, better than you. And so you could never get raped like me, sweetie. Anyways, he would never want to rape you. Never. Um <laughs> Literally, you would have to beg, you would have to rape him. Um, you but might be me, right. you literally might be right. knocked me out, rock him, sock him, raped the shit on me. That's okay. But anyway, so then we stopped being friends, lol. And honestly, it that was hurt, hurt more than the rape. But I later realized it was for the best that we stopped being friends because she was always just so fucking rude. And like her feeling, like if you know, if, if I did something to like go against her, it was like. You know, there there was a tidal wave of just of disappointment. But if I ever tried to express like, oh hey, like mm-hmm. can you not be a fucking asshole? Then she, you know, turned it around on you. D- yes, yes. Now exactly. I think that these kinds, the reason that we, because I have had my fair number mm-hmm. of these kinds of friendships, and uh, one of them being <clears throat> one of my very first best friends, um, who we will get into. <laughs> um, I think the reason why we cling to these kinds of people, if this has ever happened to you, the ones that like make us feel smaller than, is because we are being made. We are made to feel smaller than somewhere at, in our home life. Mm-hmm. Um, we feel like we don't have control in some way. So you, you kind of, at least in my experience, you latch on to people who have bigger personalities than you. It's kind of safer. You kind of like, I feel like I had this up until like my like my early to mid twenties where I would like get some, I would be really close friends with someone who was, had a bigger personality than mine and who was like very emotionally overbearing. Yeah. And I would be like their little shadow. Cause it was like, sa- mm-hmm. it was safer and it was familiar for like my home life. Yeah. So it's this, that's <clears throat> that like internalized trauma. Mm-hmm. And one of my, um, she was my former best friend. I remember meeting her when we were very young, like kindergarten um, and not liking her. Like, I didn't like her and I Isn't it interesting how those friendships kind of start out? You should also trust like your first Oh yeah, I was five, so you know what are you gonna do? Well, <laughs> if you were a smart five year old, then you would have. Yeah, okay. Well, so I'm five. Uh, I meet her and I'm like, I don't like her. Years later we're in the same high uh, middle school together. We become tight friends, but this was after you know, I don't really remember how our friendship kind of blossomed, but I do remember her doing a couple of things to really fucking embarrass me and humiliate me in mm. front of people. 
you know, like I remember telling her that I had a crush on this guy and she like brought him over and was like, Gabby has something to tell you. And I was like, why would you do this to me? And she was like, she she likes you. And he like didn't like me back. And I was humiliated when you're, you know, Especially in middle 11. school. Yeah, that's like your whole world. Horrendous. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. And I was like mortified. And then I remember like one time she pulled my pants down in front of a bunch of guys and I had this like full bush of pubic hair because I was, I don't know, why a the fuck very mature 11 year old. I'm a very mature, I was probably like 12. Lots of pubes, though. And I just, like, remember it being so fucking humiliating. But then, I'm like, you know, we trauma, I trauma bonded and she became my best friend <clears throat> for a couple of years. And um, she, I think, is still my number one <clears throat> resentment in uh, in AA. When did, what age did you guys stop being friends? We had a big falling out, I think, a, little, a, a couple of years after high school, maybe a year or two. And... So that was a long time. So, so you met her at like 11 and then all you were good friends all the way through high school. Yeah. And we still, you know, had been friends up until a couple of years ago. And I was just like, the more I've like separated, you know, we kind of lost touch. And the more I separated from her, the more I was like, oh, this relationship. And, you know, I'm sure that she would have some shit to say about me. Um, but I realized like how much kind of damage it did on my psyche and she was a very, for me, in my experience of being friends with this girl, she was very manipulative. And um, they're always kind of snaky. Snaky. She was snaky. And <clears throat> I don't know if she's this way now, but she was always one. If I told her how I felt about things, it would she would turn it around on me. And there was always a problem with me. And I was never a good enough friend. And it fucked, it fucked me up. And it was funny. One of my best friends from childhood got married over the past weekend. Shout out to Jen who listens to this podcast. Love you, you fucking bitch. Um, and Taryn also love you so much, you fucking bitch. And we were bridesmaids. Oh, well, I was, Taryn and I were bridesmaids. Jen was the bride. And we were talking about how this girl also, like, they were like, she was our biggest bully. Mm-hmm. Like, and they were like, and you became best friends with her. And I was like, yes, I did. And I feel bad because I never stuck up for you guys. But it's also like that. I mean, I used to get really fucking angry when um, I, I had a, and you know her. She was wretched, and like everyone in the and like and like our little community like didn't like her. But then I brought her in, and so many of my friends started like trusting her. They're like, oh, okay, well, if you're really close with her, then then sure. And then she would like in every single social setting we would go to for like birthday parties or anything having to do with comedy. Like she would just just be so abrasive and rude to people. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? But I couldn't really stand up for them because, you know, it was kind of like that. Like, I'm not standing up for myself. So how the fuck am I supposed to stand up for you? Yeah, because you you feel like you're being pushed over by this person who you kind of have let, like, take over your whole world. It kind of becomes, like, the pain becomes normal. You well, kind of, and you, sorry, like, you, no, like, no. You, you kind of, like, live, I remember in this friendship, like, like, being so, like, loving her so much, but also always feel like I was on, feeling like I was on eggshells with her. Well, you want to know what it is, too? I feel like that also kind of has played out in relationships, because it's, like, you, mm-hmm. you're on eggshells because, you like, and you're not really happy, but, like, you, you're, you're craving that validation. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the few times that, like, they are nice to you. It feels amazing. And it feels like you're like, you succeeded. You're like, oh yes. Yeah. Like, okay. I like, I made them love me. And then like, you know, then they turn around and. So I think it's kind of self-preservation to be like really close with that type of person. Because if the, you, you're you like, whatever, they're going to come after me anyway. So I might as well like really get to know this person and be Befriend close to this person. the enemy. Yeah. And then it will hurt less. You know, like, yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll care for the person. So then their attacks hurt less. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. The, she, I don't know. And then after our friendship kind of ended, I had a slew of friendships that were very similar to our dynamic. Mm-hmm. And um, then I met, well, I, and then I met Joy, and Joy was always like the better. You met her when you were 13 or 16? 16. Joy and I met. But once I like Joy came into my life, I was like, oh, she has all of the qualities of these people that I love. Like Joy is outgoing. She's funny. She's charismatic, but she's also very sweet and honest and um she's so loving supportive. Yeah. It, right. And she was never like a, a snaky kind of liar, sneaky. 
No. Narcissist. No, like fuck no. the other people I've well, been surrounded by. We were just by. talking about that in the car. Yeah, how narcissists cause so much fucking pain. But there's a, yeah, I think it was an armchair expert episode with Brene Brown. Was it that one they were talking about? Narcissists about how like. No, that wasn't an armchair. I think that was just Brene's podcast. Okay. But they were, yeah, she was talking about how like narcissists like, um, obviously like create boundaries. So like you don't get hurt by them, but like it, uh, you need to create, um, what the fuck am I saying? Oh, uh, boundaries because like they, uh, you know, they will just take, take and take. Mm -hmm. However, like they also do require, they're like the most hurt and they require the most compassion, but that doesn't mean you need to like let them have full reign over your life. Right. And I was just listening to another podcast, uh, armchair expert with mm, Dak Shepard. And he was interviewing, I was the one I sent you this guy, David Lieberman, who is like a, Something kind of like he's a neurologist, a, personality, something. Yeah. He studies human behavior. Right. Yeah. And they were getting into the difference between um, like narcissists and like psych- psychopaths and sociopaths. And narcissists are just like deeply wounded people who who have a conscience but are, you know, are wounded. Yes. But sociopaths and psychopaths have zero conscience and they learn how to manipulate people like to benefit themselves without feeling any kind of remorse. Mm -hmm. And they scary. And he was saying that he doesn't, you know, that the studies have shown that it's like one in every 25 people is a sociopath, but he was like, I don't think it's that many. That would be a ghastly fucking number. It would be. That would be an astronomical amount of fucking psychopaths. But if it that if that number really is true, then men need to stop calling us over dramatic when we call every single one of our exes sociopaths because statistically they statistically, probably are. It's really that's really scary that people exist that literally have no, no conscience. No conscience. Yeah. So okay, so we break that down. Does that mean if we believe in souls, which we all believe in souls, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Would a person without a conscience be soulless? No, I think that they're. Uh, oh, sorry. I have a, I have an immediate reaction to this. Yeah, no, I no. think I think that somebody without a conscience is just all ego. So their yes, soul, it's true. Their soul doesn't have a chance to like bloom and blossom and and really like uh, develop. Yeah. Uh, so I think that they just have a very underdeveloped or or infant infant style of soul that that they don't know how to kind of go down deep. They don't know how to connect with other people on that level. And they just are kind of stuck underdeveloped on a, on a spiritual level. Wow. Yeah. And I it really is, like the way you just explained that. Yeah. It, it is, it is like a, it, an over exaggerated ego. It's funny because they did talk about that and that about how it's all ego based. Yeah. Lee, it's funny because we're going to listen to that fucking episode tomorrow when we're driving down to San Diego. Okay. And don't try and fill me up. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> I do want to touch on one thing, though, from the, like the transition. I feel like going from the person that gets bullied to the person that transitions into the bully, I feel like I kind of had like a villain arc, if you will, because I feel like my yeah. whole life I was so – okay, you don't need to aggressively agree. But I feel, <laughs> I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like my whole life I was so shy. Okay, it was – okay, not you guys go like – <laughs> jerking each other off. Okay, you're coming tomorrow and you're going to jerk him off. Okay, no, but actually, so, I'm not because I have a show in Long Beach. I have a show in Long Beach, so I'm not going tomorrow. Okay. Um, but so um, I feel like, you know, I feel like it's like when you're, like, you're, you're pushing someone for a long enough, like they're going to have like a breaking point. And I was always so shy. I was always like, you know, actually, mainly too. It's literally like Alphaba in, in, the, in the musical Wicked. Did you ever see Wicked? No. Well, she has the villain arc. Does she? Because everybody is like, you're so, she was born green and everybody is like, you're a witch. You must be a nasty person. Ew, burn the witch, burn the witch. And she's like this sweet, kind thing, but she gets but she's bullied her whole green. life. She <laughs> has this villain arc where she's like, you know what? Fuck it. If you guys all say that I'm the villain, well, I'm the fucking villain. And you know what? There's actually power in that. Do you think that getting bullied hurts worse when it comes from men or from women? Women. Okay. I think actually, I don't know. They, it equally hurts differently though, but being burned from women is like a really, it's really a, painful. It's a, I feel like with women, it goes, we're able to hurt so much deeper, but like mm-hmm. for like, a, I mean. With men, it's almost like expected. You're like, well. Yeah. I had this one guy bully me throughout middle school and high school and he made my life me. a fucking miserable. And then also like guys like, you know, like on the internet, like always just like running their mouth, but you're like, shut the fuck up. It's just like a fly buzzing around your head. It makes me mad. Yeah. It like men that like have bullied me, make me mad. And it does hurt your feelings a little bit, but with women, it's like a wound. You're like, 
like the reason, like I've been able to let go of so much resentment in my life. Um, just like specifically towards men who have like hurt me or lied to me or cheated on me and stuff. But this one like major resentment that I have towards my ex, my former best friend. Losing a a best friend though too, especially that you're trauma bonded with. I think that honestly hurts more than a breakup. And I'm still, and the issue is like, I'm still, I still harbor resentment towards her. So, you know, this has been a decade later. So I think some people growing up would have uh, called me a bully. Were you a bully? I think I think I was I think I just made fun of everything and everyone all the time and that some of my friends definitely stopped hanging out with me. Really? So Yeah. So th- like working with us is kind of like karma. It is like his it, karma. It is, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I I feel like I became I'm kind of a bully too. Yeah, um, even though that's on the rock of love girl. Yeah, and see, the <laughs> thing is is like I am insecure um, and I do have self hatred, and you realize that comes out when you start like making fun of people, or I don't know. There's also the element too of like you are just being funny and like stupid, but you know, like with the Rock of Love girl, it's like I didn't mean any fucking harm. I just like was being stupid, but that is it was like a bully th- move, I guess. I mean, yeah, like you're making jokes on her expense on, at her expense. Yes, but question. So isn't so I know where I grew up specifically, like how you really when the you 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 were mean to the people you love the most oh my it, family we roast the fuck out of each other but yeah. it's like it's funny but like you're going for the jugular but as a joke like and that and and, and at home like the only time the only time that anything was stable was like when we were making each other laugh mm-hmm. so yes, like we knew same. nobody was really mad mm-hmm. when they were laughing yeah. So, so I just right. kind of brought that out into the world. And I think that when I was young, some friends stopped hanging out with me. Like I had one friend that we were neighbors and we were the b- best friends and we started playing music together and skateboarding and everything. Mm-hmm. And then I think he stopped hanging out with me because I kind of started getting closer to these other guys that we would be mean to each other. Yeah. And, okay. it, was, and it was fun. And we, that's how we would have fun. It's also yeah. like a really little like release. Yeah. I mean, every person I've ever dated has said that I'm a bully because like I, oh, my, well, there it is. my love language, well, <laughs> don't come for me, sweetie. Um, now, but, my boyfriend would say that I'm a bully, but I've been bullied by all my exes. Well, yeah, you and I were literally talking about that too, about how like uh, Trey was the first, was the, yeah, the first person that I dated who never bullied me, but every other person I've dated has always come for me or been like, I don't like your Twitter. Or, I don't like yeah. your jokes or like, why do you do that? And so then like, I start like, I'm like, oh, you want to pick at me? Well then, okay. And then like, I'm like kind of doing it to them. But also I did grow up with a family that roasts each other. But also, and then there's the other thing like, okay, yeah, that bullying behavior, but also there's a fine line because we are also comedians and comedians fucking roast each other. Comedians are a little bit like edgier with the way that they speak to people. And we do kind of like raz each other. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. So we kind of get like a, like a get out of jail free card. It's called being an artist. And if you don't accept my comments, but here's the other thing. So here's my thing about the rock of love girl. So I don't, have we talked about this? Not, not much. I did. I did make jokes at her expense, but then when she asked me to take down the pictures and yeah, you did. I did. You were nice. And you said, you're sorry. You're like, my bad. I didn't mean to like, yeah, I'm so sorry. I can see how this came off. (laughs) And then she stayed. But here's the thing. Here's the thing is that comedians are like good at this shit, but regular people then she pops off and is actually a mean bitch right oh so, so mean right so it's like she's like oh if you're gonna come for me then i'm gonna come for you and well, it's like but you're not funny co- you're she stayed coming for you in a not funny way i do need to point that out in a not funny way yeah but she was hurt dude but like she was she was hurt yes. she was coming for you for like 15 hours <laughs> and then yeah. she blocked me too because i was like watching her stuff. yeah she blocked all of us but the thing is is like that's a, that's the thing about being because people will comment like horrific shit on my instagram and then i'll clap back and then they're like aren't you a comedian you're supposed to have a funny sense aren't you supposed to have a sense of humor about this and i'm like but you're not funny like it's not i could take a roast all fucking day but when you're straight up just like this isn't funny you ugly bitch i'm like that's not what's fu- yeah that's not i feel roast. like i feel like <laughs> being no that's just there. mean it's just yeah. you being a bully well you, and you hear a lot of comics to- comics specifically talk about this where where people people come at them just mean and then yes. try to, and then try to be like i'm just joking I'm are just you the joking. comedian yeah. they, they love doing that especially no, you're not funny i did this show it was like one of the first shows i did after like the bands on performing publicly were lifted or whatever for the pandemic. And I was in San Diego. Hawk, I think you were there, but whatever. But so anyways, 
I, I, it was after the show. I had like a really fun, like wild set and I get off stage and I was talking to some girls and they're like, oh my God, we loved your set. And this one guy came over and he was like, yeah, you almost held your own with the guys. And I was like, what? Okay. And he's like, what? Oh, you're not going to laugh. I'm being funny. And I was like, no, you're honestly being a fucking wretched shrimp. And was he a comedian? Bitch. He was some drunk asshole in the audience. He was a drunk fucking asshole. God, they're all like that. And you're like, you're not funny though. Like that wasn't creative or funny. In my experience, it's after shows it's never women that come up and say anything shitty like if they don't like you they just won't come up to you and that's fine but it's it's like that guys that come up women. and it, even if they do like you like they come up and they almost feel like threatened that you were up there being loud and the attention and being was on yourself, you yourself like, yeah wait a minute you're women supposed aren't supposed to be like this women aren't supposed to be like this you're supposed to be insecure all right let's get into stories, okay, let's get into okay. stories. all right you ready yeah my mom all right. Of course, it starts with my mom. This is uh, the title of the email. My mom and the guy who called me Rosemary from Shallow Hal. <laughs> oh, my God. I loved that movie. I love that movie, but that is such a... Wretched. F- okay. Most of my childhood, I was overweight. I got made fun of in general ways in elementary school, called fat, boring, pushed into mud on the playground, a little more fun, <laughs> etc. My mom put me on endless diets and never let me have anything the other kids were having. She was particularly cruel one day and tried to motivate me by telling me if I didn't lose weight, I'd be so fat that I wouldn't be able to fit through the door and that no one would would want to be seen with me. What a gem. That was really, really effective of her. How could that not motivate me? How funny that when I confronted her years later, she said she didn't remember that. They always do that. They always do that. Like, hey, mom, why did you, you know, remove my door and call me a fat pig every single day of my life? Well, that's not how I remember it. No, you're making that up. My mom does it all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, all of this to no avail in my defense. I was just a kid who wanted to have fun and eat normal things like everyone else. Come my freshman year of high school, I was still pleasantly plump. Shallow Hal had come out recently, and one day I was in AP bio and had to go to the bathroom. So I leave and start walking down the empty hallway to the bathroom. This obnoxious shithead guy named Brandon had, I guess, gotten into trouble during his class and was sent out to sit in the hallway. As I was walking by, he started saying, oh my God, is the ground shaking? Is it an earthquake? No, it's just Rosemary walking by referring to me and laughing. He was mimicking being scared and feeling shakiness around him. Okay. She should have sat on him. Fuck him. Yeah, I know. Also, does this guy do improv now? I know. He's putting on his one-man show. I just kept walking and tried to ignore him in the moment, knowing exactly that he was calling me Rosemary from Shallow Hell and not in a good way. Later that year, I developed an eating disorder, lasting seven years, but I finally recovered and am better now. Go off, queen. We love to see. We love a recovery story. But for the rest of high school, I was really skinny and hot. And whenever Brandon would try to approach me, I'd laugh in his face and tell him to fuck off because he was an ugly, dumb loser. But I'll always remember what he said to me for as long as I live. Fuck bullies. Fuck bullies. Yeah. And and also, like, look at that. It does fucking haunt. Like, look at that. That's so, you know, thank God she can laugh it off and... And whatever, but like that is so fucking haunting. And you know, when you're in school, that's your entire fucking world. And it's also like, God knows what the fuck's going on at home. Yeah, I know. And God so that's knows. your little escape. And then you come, and it's fucking hell. But she said something that reminded me of something that happened in my high school, where she said that she was pushed down in the mud. There was this so mean. There was this really overweight girl. She is so fucking sweet. Um, we did Girl Scouts together, whatever. But it was raining one day. And this group of guys were fucking with her and they were walking a little bit ahead of me. And I'm kind of like in my own head thinking about shit. And all of a sudden I like hear her go like, stop, stop. And I look up and they pushed her down in the mud and they were like, roll, roll pig, roll piggy. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. That would haunt you forever. That would fucking traumatize you. It was so awful. And I remember I got in school suspension because I went up to them and I I think I like cursed them out or y'all, y'all know my snake mouth. I don't know what the fuck I said. I said some like fucked up shit to them and then they went and told on me and then they didn't get in trouble for what they did. Really? And then I got uh, two weekends of Saturday school. And you know what? The patriarchy wins again. Again. Run and tell that Miss Australia. But that, oh God. That is just so, like pushing, p- being physically violent with someone on, on top of being verbally too. That's just horrific. Yeah. Horrific. Also, like, I feel like I was always like funny and quick witted with, with my friends and family. But then, you know, I fucking dropped out of high school my 
the beginning. Okay. So it was the end of my sophomore year. So like the beginning of my junior year, because these girls that used to be my friends, another, another fucking, you know, female friendship down the drain. Um, they started bullying me cause I was on crutches and they said I was bringing down the group and they just completely stopped talking to me. And like, they all got really hot. And then I had like, you know, frizzy, like bottle dye pink hair and shit. But then when I came back, um, to school, I was like, okay, I'm literally, no one's going to fucking talk to me like that again. And the cunt was born. <laughs> hey honks and jizz literally <laughs> elite honk here. And it's worth Hell every yeah. penny. Even if I don't take advantage of my perks, LOL. Um, I was bullied pretty relentlessly starting in sixth grade. Honk, pay attention. I am. I was pudgy. I was a pudgy weird kid with weird interests and nervous tics. Prior to sixth grade, it wasn't really an issue, but puberty hit everyone in my class. I went to a private Catholic school and was with the same group of kids from kindergarten on. That sounds like a nightmare. Um, it was like a switch flipped and I was the target of everyone's hormonal nastiness. There was a group of mean girls that pretty much dictated who was cool and who wasn't. The leader was a girl I'll call Trisha. Trisha made it her life's work to make me miserable. All of a sudden, no one would eat with me at lunch. I was teased mercilessly for everything I did and said. If I raised my hand in class, it started a shitstorm. It even progressed to the point where these girls would have sleepover parties at Trisha's and call my house to continue to continue the verbal abuse. This was 1982, no. and there were no precautions in place for kids like me. Protections, sorry. Protections for kids like me. There were no anti-bullying programs. My parents went to the principal and were told that if I couldn't make an effort to fit in better, there was... <laughs> talk about victim blaming. Uh, there was nothing the school would do. No. Fucked up. No. And this is why everyone was killing themselves in the fucking 80s. This is why... This is also why, like, our gener... We're all fucked up. Yeah, because it's just... You can't... You, like, these people were... Toughen up. It's like, I'm literally tying a noose. It but is okay. literally, well, what were you wearing? Like, that is the mindset yeah. of all of this. You oh. would have fit in so well back then. Okay. Well, that's how, okay. like, our parents <laughs> okay. were raised. And so that's, like, the attitude. No, that of they course. Yeah. Of oh, course. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. No, it's, this is so fucking painful, especially to, like, it's already so embarrassing to, like, have to, or at least, like, I feel like it would be embarrassing to have to, like, you know, um, uh, confess to your parents, oh, hey, I'm getting fucking bullied at school. Like, it's really shitty. Yeah. And then your parents have to, like, the worst thing in the world is like having your parents come to school for anything, you know? And so then like, not only yeah. are they going to school, but then they're like, suck, sorry. It's like, okay. Yeah. And you're already, yeah, God, the torture, like the mental agony that you go through when you're being bullied and you're like nervous. And isn't it so fucked too, that when you're in high school, like, of course you logically know there's gonna be a future but like you re at least for me i couldn't like see past that i was like oh my god like this feels like jail this feels yeah, like yeah it does the end of the world okay it got to the point where my parents had to pull me out of school in the middle of seventh grade i'm almost 52 now and it has taken me decades to undo the damage that nearly two years of bowling did to my head and spirit oh I, uh, but I reached a kind of peace with it a few years ago. I got a Facebook friend request from the lead bully's sister. I was a little freaked out, but checked out her profile, and it looked like we had a lot in common, so I went ahead and accepted. The two of us eventually went out to dinner, and that's when we addressed the elephant in the room. That was Trisha. It turns out that when Trisha wasn't bullying me, she was bullying her sister. Uh, yeah, of course. Mm. Every morning, Trisha would tell her what a piece of shit she was. As a result, she now had a very arm's-length relationship with Trisha. Trisha was now an active alcoholic and had an eating disorder. Can't win them all. She'd been arrested for at least one, uh, been arrested at least once in public for public intoxication. No shit. To the point of being a major disturbance. This bitch is, a, she's miserable. Was and let's miserable. lock her up. Lock her up. You would think that I'd get some kind of pleasure from knowing this. Instead, I wound up feeling a lot of sympathy and empathy. I have been sober mm. for 20 years now. Hey, congratulations. I was hit with the understanding that something was obviously really wrong with Trisha. It doesn't undo what was done to me, but I understand now that there was a real pain and illness behind Trisha's actions. Sorry this was so long and particularly not funny, but here's a pic of me. Honey, don't ever apologize again. You're perfect. Um, But here's a pic of me back around when I was being bullied and me now. I love the podcast and you. Maybe I'll take advantage of the video chat someday. I'm the I'm the one who told the story about clot sandwich, so I can definitely be foul. Honk your tits off. Oh my god. I, I like, honestly, almost like want to cry. Like I you know. just look so sweet. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Oh, sweet. Just so sweet. This, What's the picture under? Uh, that, yeah. Oh my god. The picture under is this Gorgina Queen now. Okay, gorgeous. We and love you said it. you're 52. Bitch, you look young. Look at 
I mean, yeah. 52 is young, but you know what I mean? No, she doesn't. Yeah, um, You don't look 52. Great. Also, thank you for writing in. Thank um, you so much for writing in. And sharing that with us. Y'all never have to apologize if it's not funny. You guys don't need to, like, make it funny. I think I think it's, like, famous now for that one story we read. And God bless your soul. Whoever was trying to write that in, it was like it was like you were writing a late night packet. It was like, joke, joke, joke. And we were like, bitch, you done exhausted us. So please, no, everything's fine. But I'm so sorry you got bullied. But congratulations on being 20 years sober. But and- also. So the self, like, so while you're, while we're reading that, you know, immediately for me, my like blood pressure raises and my heart starts beating faster. Cause I'm like, yeah, fuck that bitch. Like, of course, like, yeah, like fucking, yeah, she's an alcoholic now. And yeah, her life sucks. Like, hell yeah. But then you took the, the high road, the high road by being like, I actually felt empathy for her. And like, that is the way that we need to approach these situations. Even when we have so much like, Malice. Trauma. Or, okay. Um, well, when we have, you know, trauma from these people mm-hmm. and when we do have like a lot of resentment and anger harbored towards them and for you to be able to like have that empathy and be like, man, that sucks. Like, and obviously like, yeah, this girl, Trisha was really struggling with some fucking demons. And yeah. yeah and like, it doesn't excuse, God you know, speed on her journey. Like what she did to you. Obviously that's really fucked up if it took you fucking like decades no, to we'll probably, yeah. To, you know, to move past. But yeah, that's really beautiful that you can, you know, forgive her, not necessarily for her, but for, like for yourself, which is so I mean, important. I still haven't been able to do that for the person that I'm harboring the most resentment towards. And I thought I was more emotionally woke than that. But turns out I am still angry. Need to work my steps. Resi- Honestly, her her email was really giving program, though, with like having empathy. You know, she's 20 years sober, so yeah, she's probably programmed the fuck up. Yeah. Resentments is, is, was part uh, the part that I really struggled with the most because it's hard. I'm, I'm not... I don't harbor real resentments. I don't have, yeah. I don't have those things. Like I've always, I don't know. I've never, I don't, I had to really like force some resentments through just I, to get, I get them that. on the page. Yeah. Like I'm not, A, I fucking was blacked out most of the time and I'm not yeah. upset about things. Like it was just, <laughs> you don't remember. I was just killing myself. Yeah. It yeah. Was, I was, there was no Is one it really to blame. I've never gotten to my four step, but I like, or whatever, whatever, but like, is it possible to like have yourself as a resentment? Um, I yeah, don't know. It yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Because I, I have that- myself as a resentment and I ask the same question. Mm. All right. Mm. Okay, hunky. All right. This is from, this is from the Patreon. Well, the, so this is who, um, uh, suggested the topic. Yeah. This, this oh. is a suggested topic. So this is our suggested is, topic person. And this is our, our, our hot I'm just going to quickly remind topic. y'all, um, if you, it's the $20 tier. Yep. Okay. If you're in the 1% tier, number one, you're hot, <laughs> but then also you can suggest topics to us. And then also you can submit a story that will a hundred percent make it onto the episode instead of like a catch up, um, episode. Yep. With that being said, here we go. When you're disabled in the public school system, your classmates know way before you do that you're a few eggs short of a dozen, you know? Ooh. I do know. (laughs) In elementary school, the bullying was mostly from girls who would make me be the dog when we played house. (laughs) Bitch. Stop. (laughs) Stuff like that. I didn't understand why they were making fun of me. They would exclude me in subtle ways. It didn't quite make sense, but I was just happy to be included. (laughs) As I got older and started middle school, the bullying became more apparent, more intentional. The same sort of, oh, what are you drawing? Anime? Can you draw me? That's so good. From girls in my class, not the anime. Oh. Um, Honey, draw the anime at home because it, it, it is a fucking battle. You are asking to get bullied when yeah, you draw anime do not, at school. You know, not to victim blame, but bitch, you're begging for it Can if we, you're wait, anime what, real, real, real quick. Why is it always love you? And this is not why is it always the dorkiest ones that are drawing anime? You're never going to see a fucking double deed fucking like a hot ho- girl horse haired fucking hottie drawing in the anime. corner fucking drawing a fucking like s- battle sword and a yeah. fucking like Goku. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> I can't. No, you're never going to fucking see. <laughs> I'm not bully her mid story. I can't. <laughs> I we just bullied you. I'm so sorry. All right. Okay. 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 
All right. Um, <laughs> it's so fucked up. I'm sorry. Look at us being fucking bullies. <laughs> put like an arm up. Like when like, someone's like cheating off of you and you don't want to put another up. paper on top yeah, of it. And when they come like, by, slide it in, to- on, on, in front of it. Or like pretend to take a nap and then just draw it like really tiny, you know? <laughs> like, girl, come on. All right. All right. Here we go. One time I wasn't allowed to go to the nurse when I was in the seventh grade. I puked all over my crush's desk in homeroom. Oh. I earned the lovely nickname Chunks. Mm. That's kind of cute. I know it is. And they even, well, it's, yeah. And they even made up a little theme song Ooh. they'd sing it when i walked down the halls uh, well let us know how with the lyrics leave work. us leave us a voice note yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. then i started getting asked out as a joke that's fucking horrific okay that is uh, that's something out of a fucking movie that is like seriously it's so mean that's probably one of the meanest things you can fucking do publicly humiliated in the cafeteria i was asked out to homecoming as a joke my freshman year by one of the most popular guys in school in front of everyone that so fucked up. And what do you want to bet now that that guy is jerking off to weird fucking child porn in a fucking basement? Literally nailed it. And that's true. One time I had a gym lock chucked. Oh, this is so fucked up. One time I I had a gym lock chucked at my head full force. Bitch, that's fucking assault. It is assault. Oh, that shit hurt. I also wasn't allowed to sit out of gym that day. How? 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 How were you just getting fucking abused? Here's the thing. With gym, I one time fucking dislocated my pinky and they still made me play. But it, it was, like, I feel like it's just a rule of thumb for the ladies. If you're ever like, uh-oh, <laughs> bloody time, then they just let you miss. If you have like a fucking head wound, no. I'm so sorry that you fucking went through this. One time I was even shoved down the stairs in the in the 10th or 11th grade. I fell face first, flapping like a fucking fish. I truly blocked out most of my bullying because it was truly messed up. Oh yeah, my God. your brain's protecting you. This wasn't funny, but it also kind of is. Okay, so <laughs> it did build character, and you're right. Does bullying build character? Hell yeah, and look at you now. Yeah. We fucking love you. Ask my therapist. XOXO, love you guys. P.S. I'm hot and funny now, so joke's on them. Of course you are. Yeah, of course it is. Because you either become one way if you're bullied. You either become Columbine shooter or you become a comedian. Yeah. And that's it. And the two are very, very closely linked. Very per- <laughs> Yeah, the Joker the is Joker. spot on. But um, Jesus Christ. You know what's fucking whack, too? Is like when... Have you ever had this? Like where someone was mean to you in school and then they hit you up years later when they see what you're doing? Yes, like, all the time. Hey, girly yep. girl. All you're of like, my bullies follow me on Instagram and watch my stories. And I'm always like... <laughs> obsessed. I remember like before I got really into stand-up, like when I was first... When I first moved to LA, the only thing in my head that I wanted more than anything was a see myself on a fucking billboard or on the cover of a magazine just so I could like, just so all of my bullies and all the guys that rejected me would see it and be like, oh, we shouldn't have. And now it's like, nobody even cares anymore because we're all old and they probably forgot about me. But but honestly, <sighs> no, I'm sorry. But like, okay, someone fucking tweeted this a million years ago and I've never forgot it, but it's, it's something like, uh, for, for like attention, all creatives, the sooner you find out what drives you, the sooner you're going to have a great career. Find out, is it horny or is it horniness or is it revenge? And I was like, okay, I fucking love that. But you kind of need to have like that, like the, the whatever fuels, like that thing that fuels you just pushing you. And yep, honestly, true. spite is, is great. Um, okay. Hi, Honks and Lee. I have a few, bull- uh, a few brief bullying stories from my childhood that all revolve around my skin color slash facial features. This has always struck me as an extremely bizarre or as extremely bizarre because I'm literally just Italian with a small portion of Middle Eastern. Okay, she's literally so fucking cute. Yeah, she's so cute. You're a ton. Oh, wow. She is really pretty. For those of you listening, Lee is now fully erect. Um, this, uh, those the- Middle Eastern girls, they're always the most fucking beautiful. It's so beautiful. The weird and mean comments about my appearance began literal seconds after I was born. I popped out of my mom and was visibly visibly darker than she was. One of the delivery nurses, dead ass, looks at my mom and asks, is your husband Mediterranean? Which is really weird because he was right there. He cut my umbilical cord, so I don't know why they didn't just ask him. Anyways, when I got to elementary school is when the real fun began. I had recently moved to Texas and the kids at my school district were really mean. Keep in mind that I am always a tan color year round, but in environments where the sun is always out, I get quite dark very quickly. So given that it's sunny a lot in Texas, I was usually always my darkest shade. In kindergarten, as we were waiting in line to leave the classroom, a blonde girl takes her finger and starts stroking my arm before proceeding to ask, how does your skin get like 
that. Another girl told me straight up that I would be prettier if I looked like her. Oh. She was much paler than me. Oh. Oh my God. No, I, that I was never like that. I don't know why no, kids, they, I would never have done that. No, 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 no. That to me is so fucking unhinged. Or like going up to like black girl's hair and like touching it. Never, going, like, I never, oh my God. never, 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 no, did. That's never so did. Fucking, never even thought about it. it. It's so fucking weird. It's so weird. It's so fucking weird. I guess I was just one of those kids who didn't see color. That's just as problematic. Um, at the same school, <laughs> a kid on the playground kicked dirt at my face oh. and told me my skin was the color of shit. What is wrong with kids? <laughs> oh, my God. I was so stunned, and I didn't really know how to process it because I was around seven at the time. Fast forward a few years. I was a freshman in high school and was in my first week of marching band camp. Uh-oh. 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 Uh, I don't know. Nerd alert! <laughs> Not us all going, uh-oh. Wee-hoo, <laughs> Trigger <laughs> warning. Nerd um, <clears throat> oh, Scratch my throat doing that. Okay, um... A marching band camp. Okay, wow. That's a lot to unpack. Uh, we were marking our sets on the pavement, and three kids directly in front of me were whispering and pointing at me. <laughs> they saw me looking at them all confused, so they just blurted out, what race are you? Oh. I responded, I'm Italian. Then they looked at me in my face and said, really? I thought you were Indian. And another kid said, I was banking on black. Oh. And then they laughed. I don't know if it was if I was more hurt or aggravated or confused. Like the backhanded comments about my skin color just confused and pissed me off. I thought I wouldn't get any more of those comments once I got into college. But my freshman year, I was in a study room How? with my three friends and one of their friends who was a junior on the swim team. After a bit of casual conversation, the kid who was a junior asked me if I was Chilean. I was like, no. And he said, you better watch out. Trump's going to de deport your family. So he was like, kind of like looking out for you. Um, I'm just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, to which I kind of just froze and then changed the subject because what the hell? How is this happening? I mean, as white women, we don't have to. We don't, I have never faced any of this shit. So, no, we don't face any fucking so adversity. So I hear this stuff and I'm like, how is this real? Like people are really this oh, fucking stupid so, and offensive. I mean, it's like that subway story I told you guys on the train. Like people are fucking whack out so here. So I've had to realize this before where I, yeah, I don't, I mean, as a white man, I mean, yeah. come on, I'm like. The most hated. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I, I face no pushback in public whatsoever. Yeah, none of it. Nobody's ever made comments about my skin color. Nobody's ever said any of that Never shit. Never once. The one Never. thing I get, the one thing I get is like big guy. Hey, big man. Hey, boss, hoss. Like I, I wish, I wish that I love Haas. Haas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, the, what about like governor? the like the big guy or like the like the big guy comments in in public actually bother me. I don't like it. Um, but what, what if what if what if? Hey, wee man. <laughs> Hi, little boy. Just, Hi, little baby. So, but Hi. I have. Hi, you little tiny fuck. <laughs> I had a good friend. In, Hi, you little weak I, shit. Hi, elf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, little gnome boy. You're my little garden gnome. Are Ooh. you a gnome? No, 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 no. Are you going to protect my garden? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, you little fairy boy. <laughs> Cups on my shoulder. Woo. <laughs> Okay. Are you it's guys giving done? Thumbelina. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, go. Uh, I had a good friend in in uh, in Maine who was Middle Eastern and looked it, and his name was Raj, and he he was the manager at this bar and would catch shit constantly, and like he was talking about it one day, and I was like, and I was just like flabbergasted. I was like, I've never, ex I like, yeah. I, like especially now especially like especially now yeah like like he was telling me he's like dude it's almost every day it, that's insane that he gets like some kind of racial some kind of middle eastern yeah who gives a fuck here's the thing, like i mean we've never been on the other side of that because we aren't people of color um but also i have never been that person either to be like what's going on with your skin you know like i just where are where do these people fucking come from God, in North Carolina, I will never forget. Okay, so I, I'm at some stupid fucking, like, high school party or whatever. And I'm standing, and, like, the group of us, it was uh, all white kids, and then uh, and then there was one black guy, and uh, our friend. And, and, and uh, he goes inside to get another drink. And then this guy that was standing in the group, he goes, oh, my God, it's such a shame that we'll call him Sam. It's such a shame that Sam is a blank. And then he said the N word. And then my friend Sarah and I were like, what the fuck? And then he was like, God, he's just so cool. It just really sucks that he was born black. 
And we were like, holy shit. Yeah. Is that, yeah. 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 And then everyone in the group's like, yeah. And then Sarah and I left. We were like, this is so fucking, fucking disgusting. And then I remember I talked to Sam the next day and I told him what this guy had said. And I was like, can you fucking believe that? And he goes, oh yeah. He's like, I mean, it sucks, but like, you know, this is just what I have to live with every day. Yeah. And, yeah, he goes, yeah, yeah. and he's like, he's like, hey, they're not bullying me. So whatever. And yeah, I was they're like, saying I'm really but then cool. I was like, they are bullying yeah, you. Yeah, they and said then, I was cool. <laughs> and then he, he goes, he's, he said something to the extent of like, he's like, he's like, look, obviously like it's fucked up what they're saying. And he was like, but we're in like, you know what am I supposed to do? And I was like, I don't fucking know. I guess not hang out. I don't, uh, yeah. uh, 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 like, I don't yeah. know. He's like, he's like, they're my friends. I don't know. Okay. Well, okay let me finish. Me um, also oh. at my summer job a few months ago, an older white guy I worked with asked me if my name was Arabic. I said, no. Then he left my cubicle. Honestly, I've just grown used to all of this at this point, accepted that the world treats racially ambiguous people as things that they can poke and prod at, which is really annoying and insulting. Mm -hmm. But I know that there's really nothing I can do about it. On the plus side, I've never gotten a sunburn in my life. And the same people who made nasty comments about my skin are the same people who douse themselves in fake tan or go tanning to, uh, yeah. to go to tanning salons now to resemble what I have naturally. So I guess that makes it suck a little less, LOL. Because the core of it is honestly jealousy, sweetie. Exactly. P.S. I love this podcast so much. It's really helped me keep a smile on my face during a really tough time. I'm currently going through the worst summer I've had in many years. Fuck, I'm sorry. You three have helped me so much in laughing and coping through the hardship, and I really feel like I'm going to be okay. Thank you guys for helping me see the light in some of my darkest days. Love you guys. It blows my mind that people actually feel this way. I'm like, are we both lying? Like, am I really, are we really being told that? That's, I know. It's so, every time, like, what the fuck? That's oh, the nicest fucking thing I've really ever seen. Sweet. That really means so fucking much. Thank you so much. And I'm so sorry that you have to fucking deal with that. Hi, Anks. I've honestly never told anyone about this. <gasps> Fuck yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because honey. I fully resent myself for what I did. And also, I was so young at the time of doing this that I can't recall much from this time in my life. Oh, my God. Ooh, that just reminded me of the shitty stuff I did when I was little. When I was five years old, I slapped a boy on the bus. I don't remember why I did it. I have never treated anyone so cruelly. He deserved it. Uh, not prior to this and not after. I only remember doing this once, but something deep inside me says it happened more than that. Mm. I'm pretty sure I buried those memories deep because they were horrible memories that I would not like to remember, which sounds so dumb because, what, because uh, I was 100% not the victim. I never got in trouble until the next year in the first grade when I was leaving the bathroom. He was lined up outside his computer class and pointed at me and pointed me out of the teacher. She started interrogating me, but I denied everything, breaking down into tears. I wonder what would have happened had I had said yes, but nothing really came of it. I got away with it. I honestly wonder if part of that was because I was a girl and he was a boy. Mm. Every year I feared getting a class with this boy because I didn't want I because I didn't want him to have to see me. I wish that he would forget and have no recollection of it in the same way I have very little recollection. Oh, this has haunted you. But we did end up having math class together in the sixth grade. I don't remember much of that class either because I was always sleep deprived due to my late night habits. He never confronted me about what happened, though. We both constantly failed to complete our homework for that class, and the teacher would humiliate us constantly for it. I eventually got my shit together and started finishing my assignments on time. Our teacher praised me for improving. At the same time, she was scolding him in front of the class. <laughs> oh, I felt accomplished for doing better, but I hated that she compared us in that moment. Knowing what I had done to him in the past, I was no better than him. In fact, I was worse for what I'd done. Oh, my God. <sighs> this is heartbreaking. In high school, you are... You have so much heart in high school i found out his parents ended up sending him to military school usually parents do that if their kids have behavioral behavioral issues and i felt guilt still do feeling i may very well have contributed to that part of me has always wanted to try and find him online and send him a message but another part of me not truly Another part of me not truly knowing who he is or what he may be like now fears doing such a thing. What if he's moved on and would not like to think about it? What would it even solve to reach out and apologize for something I'd done when I was five? I can't take it back. I can't truly right my wrongs. I just hope he's doing well wherever he is. I hope he's found true love and has a job that brings him joy. I hope he's getting to live a happy, fulfilling life. 
Sorry, it's not a funny or happy story. Thanks for allowing a space to share. Oh my god. Okay, what do you? I think I think find him and I think apologize. I don't know. I I do. I think if it's if it weighed on you this much and like you think that you, I don't know. I don't know because also the thing the thing in twelve step is like it's like if you are if there's a fear of like hurting somebody else in the process of apologizing, don't do it. And I don't know. It's like you're doing do you the right that thing. Would, that would hurt. The, I, I don't, don't think so. I no. don't think it would. No, no. I think they were so young. Yeah. And if yeah, it's, it's weighing on her this much, and she, maybe she puts a little bit of effort into finding him online, she can just say like, "Hey, I'm so you know, sorry. This I'm has s- really been bothering me, and I'm sorry. And I hope, I hope it hasn't weighed on you the way it weighed on me. But um, I really." I really would like to say that I'm sorry. And I do want to just say that, like, I mean, yeah, it does sound like you know, you like fucked him up a bit, but like also, well, also clearly, we don't know that. Uh, I don't know, but like, probably like, I don't know, but like, also, like, it, what, what I'm trying to get to is like, while it does sound like, yeah, you contributed to some, in some varying degree, you did contribute to like his pain. You were five, you know, and also, I don't personally remember any of the shit that was going on at five. No. And also, like, if he's having to go to mi- military school later on, like, guaranteed it was like his home life or yeah. whatever the fuck. Like, There's that's not just because of like on. some right. five year old, whatever. But if it's truly weighing on you, someone sent me a message one time from seventh grade. This girl was so fucking awful. And she sent me a message probably like a few years ago apologizing. And it took me a second to remember, but then How when did she that did, feel? it felt really sweet. It felt good. Yeah. And I could tell that it, and it's so funny because I had like forgotten it. And I'm like, wait, what? And then I remembered, I'm like, oh yeah, I would cry in the bathroom and I would eat lunch in the bathroom because I was so afraid of like seeing this bitch. Okay. But so when she did it, um, it it felt honestly it felt good and like i had already forgiven it i'd been like you know whatever but i could tell that like she needed that yeah and you know all of us okay. do shitty things in our life and i think like if you can like ho- like i think it's part of like holding yourself accountable and i think like okay yeah you know yeah no you're yeah. right and yeah you know I, yeah you're right um and if, maybe if you do ever reach out to him do it in a way that's like not victimizing yourself but just being like i'm honestly that's a great point too. I think that's a good point. So sorry yeah. that I hurt you. Yeah. And I hope you're doing well, you know? Yeah, I would say keep it light. Don't get like don't like get too descript with what you did too. Like don't like right. really like, you know, twist the knife. Or, or more. make it about yourself of like, yeah. I feel like I did this to you because blah, 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 blah. It doesn't sound like you're going to do that. But yeah. I think sometimes when we apologize to people, we get caught up in like um, the ego or our own ego, maybe. And and trying to justify why we did things. Yeah. But like nobody wants to hear why you did something. They just want to no. hear that you've are sorry about keep it you, keep it short sweet simple and keep it try moving. to fuck him and then try to fuck him yeah try to fuck him you know Lee, i'm gonna lock you in a cage and <laughs> i think that's good this was a sweet story um that was really fucking sweet i wonder though because you said that you don't remember why you did it and you said that like you know i wonder if he does have behavioral issues i wonder if he did something that antagonized you also not yeah. to fuck also not to like put blame on him i'm just wondering if there was a reason that you lashed out on this kid my thing too is at five years old, you're still like learning, you're figuring. Yeah, you have a lot of emotions to process. I was horrible a few times. I think I talked about it on here, but my best friend when I was really little, um, we had the same birthday. And I remember just like we were in preschool and I scratched her down her arms and I pushed her back for no reason. I just did that and it was well, awful. Did, was Why it would on I do her that? Bir- Wait, you're saying like, was it on her birthday? Maybe you were like jealous. No, 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 they- no. We have the same birthday. That's all. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. No, no, no. We have the same birthday, but. I, th- that has nothing to do with why I scratched her and pushed her. I just scratched just went, her and pushed her. Yeah. Interesting. Mean. No reason. Just mean kid thing to do. In middle school, I bullied two girls. Iran Zoo, because her name sounded like I ran to the zoo. I don't know why, but she felt like an annoying dork. But I, so was I. So it definitely was her personality. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I used to throw tissues in class and say that it fell out of her bra. Fuck you for that. Okay. (laughs) Again, I don't know what caused this. I must have been going through some stuff myself. Yeah. Uh, Another girl that I bullied with my friends ended up being a good friend as uh, as an adult, but I don't think she ever got over me and my friends calling her a bitch in the the bathroom. She is a rich girl, so maybe she was being a bitch in middle school. Okay, the the emotional depth of this email is jarring. Um, I got bullied for being a hoe. I sucked two guys' dicks at the same time in seventh grade. Okay, go <laughs> off. What? 
at the same time. Okay, and that's on Cum Guzzler. Yeah. Uh, got, Damn, bitch, go off. I know. Sucky, sucky. Okay, I sucked two guys' dicks at the same time in seventh grade in lieu of having unprotected uh, unprotected sex with them. So I thought I was being smart, but they told people and bullied me. Yeah. Honestly. Those girls always got it the worst. They always got it the worst. The girls that were caught sucking dick or lost their virginity were always. Why? Always. Oh. I always. Because girls, I don't know, because girls, girls felt intimidated and then yeah. boys wanted to call them whores but also get their dick sucked. The guys were, guys would be so, oh my God, there was this girl. I almost just said her name. Okay. There was actually, there was two girls also in seventh grade at my school. And one of it did it in like, in like the, the stairwell. Another girl did it in a bathroom, like, like during lunch or something. And everyone found out the next day and like people were throwing paper balls at these That's bitches. So mean. And it, it was like people, they were being like shame, like stoned. I'm like, calm the fuck down. So mean. Okay. Go on. You could have gotten your dick sucked. So you're an asshole. You okay. played it right. Yeah. Um, I got bullied for being a hoe left to see it. Um, they told everyone and people bullied me. Honestly, people were doing worse in middle school, but I guess maybe I was acting hoey. Would definitely do it again. LOL. And that's that, sweetie. <laughs> yeah, bitch. <laughs> okay, honestly, I was picking up bad bitch energy. Love to see it. Okay. That was the end of the story? That's honestly, uh, that's the end of the story. It was short and sweet. So she got bullied for being a hoe for sucking two dicks in seventh grade. Honestly, two dicks at once. Um color me impressed well before we leave let's just say what i've learned what we've learned from today the takeaway is that bullies uh it sticks with you throughout your life it sticks with you and don't be mean but we are you know all we can do is all we can do is forgive ourselves and continue to move on and do, and our do best better to to not be mindless with people's emotions. Yeah. Always remember that like, and also this goes for like online shit. Like the person you're about to like write this shitty ass comment towards, it's a yeah. human being. They have a social circle. They have friends. They have, they have a favorite movie, you know, like, like humanize them. I feel like yeah. nowadays it's so easy to dehumanize, to dehumanize people. Like it's almost like it's like a video game and yeah, like behind a screen, it's... you get like an ad adrenaline rush of being mean and yeah. you shouldn't fucking do when, that. When we launched our new YouTube, that was my favorite thing was to be like when somebody with all so with shitty comments, just be like, Hey, thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your feedback. Yeah. Yeah. I That's, did that yeah. a lot. Deflect it with kindness. It's like when people yeah. get mad at me on the road for, I don't know, driving shitty and they'll flip me off. I always blow them a kiss. <laughs> I love that. Is that why you got that bumper sticker? Oh my God, that fucking bumper sticker. That almost ended my relationship because it pissed <laughs> my boyfriend off so bad. Really? Oh my God. Don't get me started. <laughs> you know what? That's it's so uh, fucking immature. <laughs> it says that I'm trying to suck my own dick and I'm going to crash. Anyway. <laughs> Love to see it. Anyway, you guys. Okay, you guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Um, you know, I just, my brain went blank. Gabby, what are we supposed to say? We oh, want, what we I want to say, Lee. Um, also, uh, as always, thank you guys for sending in your stories. Thank you for listening. We could not do this podcast without you. We love you guys. Fuck. Truly, we love you guys. Thank you. We could not do this podcast without you. We truly couldn't. It really does mean so fucking much when you guys write in. We love all your stories so much. And um, we also, whether they're funny or not, we fucking love them. And they come from the heart. And also, your money for our Patreon helps us pay our rent that we can barely pay. Yeah. We'd um, love so to see if it. you want to, if you want to be part of the Patreon, $5 a month, that's it. If you want to step up a little bit higher, it's called the honk off. And you can ten dollars a month. You can leave us a voicemail. You get access to live recordings, and uh, we have merch that's coming very, very soon. And you get first we access do. to that. And then, of course, you love to see it. We got the top tier honk. We need to change it to the elite honk, but you know that's okay. Yeah, it's twenty dollars a month. If you're rich and hot, you can afford it. And even if you're rich and ugly, we don't discriminate. Um, you can leave us a fucking voicemail. You can call in. Bitches have been calling us. We love your voicemails. It's so it much is fun. So it's much fun. It's honestly giving sister time. Um, you get an exclusive email address. You can pick topics for this motherfucking podcast. Like this episode, you can pick a topic yeah. and then you get and then and you have an exclusive email where uh you no matter what, whether you pick the topic or not, we have an exclusive email where you can get your story on the show no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we can do we will do a live call with you if you want to. You can call us in and uh have live interaction with you. I think we did yeah, that last Patreon. We did. Yep. It was so much fun. It was really is that, sweet. Is that episode out yet? Out today, yeah. Oh fuck yeah. Okay, so yeah. Georgina. 20 bucks a month. You know? Love to see it. That's what I pay for pet insurance and uh, it's worth it. It's worth it. We love you guys. Thank you for contributing to our podcast. See you soon. Follow us on Instagram and subscribe, subscribe to, our, to our, YouTube. our YouTube, please. Comment, Thank you guys. like, share, la, 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 you know it. Love you so much. Bye guys. Don't bully. Bye.